In this video, we're going to look at some of the terms we use to describe circular motion. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is something called period and then frequency. And they're uh, two important terms, and they're closely related. The period is a measurement of time, is how long, how much time does it take to do one revolution, one complete revolution of the circle. Um, its symbol is capital T. And because it's the time, it's measured in seconds. The frequency is something slightly different. You mustn't confuse the two. The frequency is the number of complete revolutions or number of complete cycles uh, that it happens in one second. Okay, so as opposed to the period, which is seconds per cycle, if you like, frequency is cycles per second. Uh, its symbol is F. And it's measured in hertz. You've met that before probably when you were talking about waves. So period is a time and it's measured in seconds. Frequency is measured in hertz. Another way of thinking about hertz is that because it's cycles per second, you could say that its unit is seconds to the minus one. Um, now that means that period, which is measured in seconds, the number of seconds per cycle is 1 over the frequency or frequency is 1 over the period and that's a very important relationship and you'll interchange between frequency and period uh, quite a lot. We can now start to think about uh, the speed of our objects moving in circular motion. Let's start by thinking about how far it travels in a certain time because that's really what speed is. So we can remember of course that one complete circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. All right, now that, of course, is a distance. That's the distance that an object will travel around the circle of radius r. We also know the time that that takes because we call that the period. So the period is the time that it takes for one complete revolution. Now, if we use that old relationship you've met a long time ago, speed equals distance over time, the speed of our object going round in the circle is going to be 2 pi r divided by t. So that's just using speed equals distance over time. That's the distance it travels in that time. t period, 2 pi r, the distance round the circle. Another useful quantity to think about when we're talking about circular motion is angular speed or angular velocity. This is simply a measurement of the angle that the object goes through per second and its symbol is this Greek letter omega. It looks a bit like a lowercase w and it stands for angular speed. So really it's just a measurement of how much angle does the object in circular motion go through per second. Now in the same way that linear speed was 2 pi r over t, we know that the total angle that an object goes through, if it goes in one complete revolution, revolution is 2 pi radians. It goes through 2 pi radians, and it does that in a period, doesn't it? So we met before the period, the time taken for one revolution, 2 pi the angle for one revolution, so the angular velocity is 2 pi divided by t. So we've now got omega, angular speed is 2 pi over t. We've got the linear speed, which we'll call v, as 2 pi r over t. So I hope that you can see that uh, there's a relationship there between that 2 pi over t, which is omega, and we could substitute in there for that 2 pi over t to give us a very useful relationship, which is v equals omega r. OK, you're going to use that a lot. That tells us the relationship between angular speed, omega, linear speed, velocity, and they're connected by the radius of the circle. 